Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. The plan for today's video was to give you guys an update on the Oasis Scaper Line 90, because I'm sure a lot of people are curious how this tank is doing. But then I thought, you know what, why not just do an update on all of my tanks? It's been a while since I did a room tour. Last time was early January, it's now beginning of April, so definitely time for an update. Now normally, before I do a room tour, I always kind of make sure that all the tanks are looking spotless and everything is looking good. This time I didn't do that, so some tanks are looking good, some tanks are looking not that good, so it's a bit more of a realistic update, I guess. Okay, so I currently have 10 tanks up and running. Pretty much most of them are nano tanks, except for this one. This is my biggest and also my newest setup. The Waz Escaper Line 90. This one has now been up and running for roughly 10 days, I think. And it's doing good, but there's definitely a few startup issues, I would, I would call them. So we have some white fungus growing on the wood, and we also have a few plants that are kind of turning brown or melting, mainly the dwarf hairgrass and also some of the crypts. But this is, this is very normal in a new setup, so I'm not really worried about it. But of course, it doesn't, very, it doesn't look very nice. So we, uh, I tried to just get rid of it as much as possible. So for the past 10 days, I've been doing water changes almost every single day. And while I'm doing a water change, I will also take a small hose and kind of siphon out as much of the white fungus or white slime or whatever it is. So I've been doing that. And also, I think yesterday or day before yesterday, I've actually started adding some livestock. I did a water test and I couldn't see any ammonia, I couldn't see any nitrate, so I've added three amano shrimp. And hopefully that will kind of help me out with that, uh, that white fungus. So if we take a bit of a closer look, we can see that on the left side here, we have some brown patches with dwarf hair grass but it's actually mostly happening on the right side. So over here you can see a large brown patch and somewhere some a bit more towards the back as well. Now it's not everything is brown. Like if you look closely you can, in between the brown grass, you can also see some fresh new shoots. So I'm thinking to just leave it and hopefully it will kind of fix by itself. I could also just of course rip it out and replace it with a fresh pot, but uh, I mean, it's easier to just let it be. I'm sure that Below, uh, below the substrate, there's a lot of healthy roots, so I think they will just uh, this issue will fix itself. And then, yeah, the white fungus on the wood is pretty, uh, pretty intense, especially on the uh, the middle section where the wood is very thick. But um, yeah, this is something that will also kind of fix itself. We just need to be patient. Now, in general, you can also see that plant growth is actually pretty good. So over here, on the front glass, you can see a lot of new growth from the dwarf hair grass. I'm also seeing some new leaves on the, uh, the crypts. And of course the stem plants, stem plants in the back are doing very well, especially the uh, Ludwigia. It's growing very tall already, almost ready for its first trimming session. If you've seen the planting video from this uh, tank, you remember maybe that I added some rhizome bunches from um, Trident Java Fern. And if you look very closely, you can also see a few new leaves popping up. So. In general, things are doing good. So I slowly want to start adding a little bit more livestock to this aquarium. So we already have three Amano shrimp. And I'm thinking this week to go to my local fish shop, pick up a few more, as well as pick up some auto sinkless. And hopefully they can kind of help me with uh, cleaning up this white fungus mess. So yeah, just a nice cleanup crew to start with. And then maybe in a week from now, we can also slowly start adding some fish. Super excited about that. And besides that, I have made a few changes since day one. Uh, first of all, I've Move the CO2 diffuser. I used to have it in the back right corner. I've now moved it more towards the front. This way the flow is just hitting it better and we get a better CO2 distribution. Um, I've also increased the light intensity. So I started on day one with eight hours on 60%. And after one week I've bumped it up by 10%. So I'm already uh, kind of blasting this aquarium with light, but it seems like it can handle it just fine. I don't think it's too much, so, so far so good. And lastly, I've also added one more plant. So with the plant order for this aquarium, actually one stem plant was missing, the Rotala Waya Nut. And I actually have this plant in one of my other tanks. So I trimmed that tank last weekend and I've added the trimmings in here. So right now, I think the planting is complete. I'm not gonna add anything else, but don't, don't hold me to that. Yeah, I think that's it for this aquarium. Um, let's move on to the shelf. So the shelf, what is new on the shelf? Of course, our saltwater aquarium is new. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's just start on top and then just work our way down. Okay, so starting on top with this one. This is my no filter style aquascape for some crystal red shrimp. This one has been up and running for three months, I think now, something like that. It's doing good. 
I basically decided to do a no filter style aquascape because this tank is all the way on top of the shelf. It's a little bit difficult to have all these electrical wires going down. So just a light, nothing else. Yeah, so this is a pretty simple setup. Also in terms of the layout, I just used uh, one piece of wood that I've glued to a rock. Um, and that's the entire hardscape basically. And then planting was pretty simple as well. But I wanted to have some plants growing out of the surface. So I've used some um, Ludwigia and some Hygrophila that are quite easy and fast growing. So they would yeah, break the surface and kind of start growing out of there. Looks pretty cool, I think. And then the Crystal Red Shrimp, they are doing okay-ish. I definitely lost a few in the first few days and weeks, but um, it seems like things are kind of stabilized now. But yeah, I'm not sure how many I have left. I think I started with 10. Maybe I have like five left, but it's kind of hard to see them in this dense jungle. So I'm thinking to just uh, go back to the shop and get a few more because I do really like them. And because these crystal red shrimp are a little bit more sensitive and they also prefer soft water, this is actually one of the few tanks that is running on reverse osmosis water. Most of my tanks are just running on plain tap water, but this one is uh, running on RO. Pretty simple because it's just a very small tank, so I don't need a lot of RO. And I'm also doing very small water changes in here. Normally in most of my tanks I do a 50% water change once a week. And this one is just like 25% every two weeks or so. So just a very simple and easy tank to maintain as well. Okay, then moving on to the next shelf. Over here we actually have two small terrariums. So I do have 10 tanks and then two small terrariums just to be specific. And these are from a brand called Biolo Arc. And they make a bunch of these in like different shapes and sizes. Um, I'll put the exact name and model number from this one on the screen. They're just really cool little setups. They also come with a light and like little air vents. Just a, just a simple setup. I wanted to do something different and uh, mix things up a little bit. So I decided to make some terrariums. I, di I did decide to stick with what I know. So I, I didn't use terrarium plants, but I just used aquatic plants. I think uh, they worked out quite well. I've included a USB pump as well just to make it a little bit more interesting. And because of that, the humidity is a little bit higher as well. So we do have some condensation on the glass during the day, but we can easily uh, wipe that away as well. This one has been up and running for a little bit longer and it's doing really well. I've added a lot of bush of Landera, a lot of moss and some um, um, Hydrocotyl tripartita. It's just doing so well. No maintenance required, nothing. This one has only been set up for two, two and a half weeks, something like that. So this one uh, still needs to grow a little bit more, but it's doing good. Also a lot of moss in here and yeah, moss is growing really well. So just nice to uh, mix things up a little bit. Let's move on to the next shelf. And this is what I call the XXL no filter vase. So just like the shrimp tank above it, this one also doesn't have a filter. It's just a vase with a light. And I mean, I think we can all agree that it's a pretty big vase. You don't see something like this very often, but I found this in my local garden center. And when I saw it, I thought we can definitely make something cool with that. And this one has been up and running since I think November last year. So quite a long time already, roughly six months or so. It's doing really good. It's home to some um, red cherry shrimp, two Olosinclas, and then there's also a group of uh, chili rasbora. That's actually two different types of dwarf rasbora. So we have the chili rasbora and then I think the other one is Phoenix rasboras, yeah. Chili and Phoenix. Um, yeah, super easy setup as well. I mean, of course, there's no filter in here. There's no CO2 in here. There's not a lot of liquid fertilizer in here. So the plants are growing pretty slowly. So there's not really much maintenance required. Um, the other sinklers are keeping the glass nice and clean. So I don't really have to clean the glass either. I am doing a water change once a week, 50%, just because, no, not because it's really necessary, just because I like to do it. I do get a little bit of like poop and like detritus on the uh, on the sand on the, in front. So I just like to siphon it out and then might as well do a 50% water change. But yeah, it's doing good. I mean, I know that some people might not be a big fan of keeping fish in these round yeah, vessels, containers, but I feel like they're doing very good in here. I feel like they're happy in here. They look good, they have nice colors, they eat well, so yeah. I think they're enjoying themselves in here. Let's move on to the next next one. And over here we have my first ever saltwater aquarium. Not gonna not gonna talk about this one for too long because I literally just released a video about this last week. Yeah, last week. I'll leave a link on top of the screen in case you didn't see it. But basically, the short version here is that I've been keeping fish tanks my entire life, which is well, I'm now 32. I guess I had fish tanks for over 25 years. Always stick to fresh water. Never gave saltwater a try. My dad did have a saltwater aquarium maybe six, seven years ago, but I never took that step. Always kind of thought it was very complicated, a little bit scared of it, I guess. 
but then a year ago I saw for the first time saltwater tanks with macroalgae. That really spoke to me because it kind of looks a little bit similar to freshwater planted tanks, so I got super excited about that. And now like a year later, I'm finally sort of able to get some of these macroalgae here in the Netherlands, so finally decided to take the step and set up my first saltwater aquarium. Really super excited about it, but there's not really much happening just yet. It's basically just cycling. I'm adding beneficial bacteria every single day, adding some fish food every single day to build up some ammonia. And that's it. I'm just letting it slowly cycle. Maybe in two or three weeks, we can finally start thinking about adding some macroalgae, but it might still take a little while, but that's uh, the first saltwater aquarium for now. And then all the way at the bottom, we have another cube. This one is a little bit more high-tech compared to the other two freshwater setups. Those are both no filter style. This one has an external filter, CO2 injection and strong light as well. So definitely a little bit more high-tech, but um, I'm absolutely loving it. It's been up and running since January, so more or less three to four months. And it's home to some sparkling gouramis, probably my favorite, one of my favorite nano fish. Um, we have an older synclus in here and we also have some orange new caridina shrimp. So just a really peaceful little nano tank full of plants, just like I like them. I have just trimmed the stem plants in the back, so it's looking a little bit short right now, but I'll overlay some clips from when it was not trimmed. I think these sparkling grams are not very happy that I uh, trimmed these stem plants. Normally they're a little bit more out and about, but right now they're a little bit shy and skittish, but we can enjoy the orange shrimp. Absolutely love them as well. Really bright color and they definitely pop in this tank. Um, yeah, because this tank is high tech, it's also a little bit more high maintenance. I mean, the stem plants basically need to be trimmed once a month and also the moss needs to be trimmed about once a month. And for that I use a moss vacuum cleaner because normally when you trim moss, you know, it always sinks to the bottom. And if that happens in this tank, it will all get stuck in the hair grass carpet and I'm trying to keep that clean. So I'm using a moss vacuum cleaner. It's basically just a small external canister filter that I've sort of converted. It's just a, an easy way to trim moss without the water level dropping because if you trim it and then you siphon it out with a normal siphon the water level drops and then you kind of run out of time so with the most vacuum cleaner it's a little bit easier so i guess that's everything on the shelf the crystal red tank the two terrariums xxl no filter vase first salt water aquarium and then the high tech cube let's move on to the next aquarium next up we have my beta aquascape and this one is home to mr alien my alien beta I think it's a common practice to name your betta fish. Didn't really want to do that because you can kind of get attached to your fish. And I had some bad luck with bettas in the past. So I didn't really want to give him a name, but he's an alien betta. So I thought, let's just give him, let's just name him Mr. Alien. He's doing really good. Um, I have him for seven months now. This tank was set up in October last year. And just, uh, yeah, he's doing really good. He's always happy, always hungry, always very active. Definitely one of my easiest or most most successful better experiences i guess yeah um i am thinking of rescaping this tank it's been up and running since yeah, october last year at the moment it's looking a little bit weird as well i trimmed it last week i'll uh, overlay a clip from how it was looking a week ago very overgrown some of the plants in here are just uh, not very well suited for a small tank I made a, I made a bit of a mistake there but yeah it's a good excuse to give it a rescape i think actually most of you will have seen this tank not too long ago Two weeks ago I did an unboxing video for this Zis Aqua CO2 system. Definitely an interesting video. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link on top of the screen. It's basically a DOI CO2 system with citric acid and baking soda, but it uh, works a little bit differently. So on top we have a liquid solution that's going to drop into a, our baking soda solution. That's going to make CO2. And it's been working very well. It's up and running 24-7 because there's no way to switch it on and off, but um, it's doing good. The liquid solution is running out, so I think we might have another week, maybe a week and a half or so, until it's done. But um, yeah, it's 50 euros for a CO2 set, which I think is not too bad. So yeah, that's the beta aquascape. Let me know what you guys want to see in this uh, tank, how I want, how I should rescape it. Then next to the beta aquascape, we also have the mini desk aquarium. So I call this a desk aquarium because even though it's sitting on our dinner table, this table kind of serves as my desk. This is where I edit the videos as well. So yeah, mini desk aquarium. It's a 20 centimeter cube, so it holds only like eight liters maybe, probably less than two gallons. Very small. Um, it's home to one guppy, which is getting too big. I need to catch him and put him in a bigger tank. And there's also a few yellow shrimp in here, but they like to hide in a dense plasmas in the background. And there's some snails in here as well. So very light stocking, 
very low maintenance cube as well. Again, no filter, so it's just the light and the tank. Lights on the timer for eight hours. And actually the goal with this aquarium was to kind of replicate one of my older setups. I'll overlay a clip of that tank right now, but that did not really work out. I mean, that tank was high tech, had CO2 injection, has very strong light. This one does not have any of that. So it does not really look exactly the same, but I think it still looks quite okay. Yeah, it's just a fun little tank, it requires very little maintenance. This one is actually very similar in terms of setup and maintenance to the Crystal Red Shrimp tank. Again, no filter, reverse osmosis of water, and just uh, yeah, very little water changes as well. So hmm, just a simple desk aquarium. Okay, we've now moved to the other side of the room. And over here, sort of hidden behind the couch, we have another tank. And I've named this one the Myanmar Jungle. Basically because the majority of the fish in here are all from Myanmar, which is a country in Asia. And we have some really cool nano fish in here. We got these celestial pearl danios. We got some um, emerald rasboras. And we also have a small group of the black tiger darios, which are always hiding. I barely ever see them, but when I see them, it makes me very happy knowing that they're still alive and doing well. But yeah, they always like to hide in the dense plant mass. But this tank is a little bit special. It hasn't been set up for that long yet. I think maybe two and a half, three months, something like that. But I'm kind of struggling with a few plants, which doesn't really happen very often. So you can't see it from up there, but I'll overlay a clip from the top. And in the middle between the two stem plants, you can see some really small stem plants. And that's the Limnophila hyperidoides. And I've trimmed that one, I would say five weeks ago, when I came back from my trip to the US, that was end of February. It's now beginning of April, yeah, five weeks. And since I trimmed it, it's barely grown back. And in general, just some of the plants are growing very, very slowly. And I think personally it has to do something with the substrate because this was the first time that I've used Aquasol from Oase, the Oase Scaper soil. Personally, I'm, I'm sponsored by Oase, but yeah, if, I, if I'm not really happy with something, I'll mention that as well. So I think the Aquasol from Oase is, is not really what I personally like. I like to have an Aquasol with, which has a lot of nutrients. And I feel like this scaper soil does not really have that much nutrients. So yeah, kind of struggling to grow some plants and not really used to that. So not really happy about that. But I mean, it is what it is. I'll, uh, I'll add in a little bit more fertilizer, add in some root taps and hopefully that will solve the issue. But yeah, I was kind of just kept dosing more fertilizer and it just turned into a bit of a green algae outbreak. So some of the hardscape is just very green at the moment, but we'll get it, we'll get it sorted and hopefully the uh, limnophila will start growing better because I was actually really looking forward to that. It's one of my, it's one of a plant, this is a plant that I've never used before. So I was really looking forward to seeing that nice and vibrant color, but it's not there yet, but I'm still enjoying this tank. It just uh, needs a little bit more time, I guess. Lastly, we have these two tanks, the 70 Scapers tank and the 45P, which used to be a home for pea puffers, but we now also have a bunch of um, tiger and guppies in here. I was hoping that I would be able to move the guppies outside already to a mini pond, but still pretty cold here in the Netherlands, so we have to wait a little bit longer. But yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on this on these two tanks because I'm actually planning to take them both down. I have some exciting changes coming up to this little corner. Um, yeah, just in general, not really happy with this setup anymore. I mean, we have two different size tanks on one stand. It just looks a little bit messy, you know, like it could be better. We also have a little bit, we have some space to go for something a little bit bigger as well. So yeah, there's some exciting changes coming up. Okay, I think that's the tour completed. I don't think it was a very long one, but uh, yeah, just a quick update on every single tank. As always, let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. Yeah, there's a few exciting changes coming up and just uh, hopefully there's lots, lots of new content coming soon. So for now, this is it guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.